Hello everybody and welcome back. Today we will talk about Bohr's atomic model. So, we talked previously about Rutherford's atomic model. So, Bohr made his atomic model. He had some postulates. The postulates are the points which he just took from Rutherford and he didn't change anything in them. And he had some contributions in which he changed some concepts and made new discoveries over the Rutherford things um, that were found in his atomic model. So we begin with the postulates of Bohr. First, Bohr didn't study the atomic structure based on the Newtonian mechanic laws, which were used by uh, Maxwell, and as we know, they led to the contradiction between Maxwell and Rutherford in the point of the emission of radiations in the electrons. As Maxwell said that, if uh, there are radiations during the orbiting of electrons around the nucleus, these radiations will lead to the uh, decreasing of the radius of the orbit of the electron around the nucleus till finally the electron hit the nucleus and this will lead to the um, to the destroying of the atomic system which is theoretically impossible. So Bohr said that in the atomic model there is a large positively charged mass at the center of the atom, which is the nucleus. He said that there are electrons which are found around the nucleus and they are negatively charged. And he said that the amount of negative charges of the electrons equals the amount of positive charges found in the nucleus, which actually makes the atom uh, neutrally charged. He also said that um, there is a centrifugal force which is equal to the attraction force. So the arrow inwards represent the attraction force, the arrow outwards represent the centrifugal force. They are uh, equal in magnitude and opposite in direction and this leads to the continuity of orbiting of electrons around the um, nucleus. These are the postulates. Let's go to the contributions. What new things did uh, Bohr tell in his atomic model? The first thing he said that electrons orbit around the nucleus without the radiation of any type of energy or the absorption of any type of energy. And by this point, he just neglected all what Maxwell have just said about the Rutherford's atomic model and the point of the destruction of the atomic system because of the emission of radiations during orbiting and stuff like that. So this was the first contribution. He just um, refused the idea of the radiation or the absorption of any amount of energy during the orbiting of the electron around the nucleus. Second, he said that electrons orbit the nucleus in definite energy levels, so that we cannot find an electron in, in any other space other than these energy levels. Simply, if this is the nucleus and we have an energy level like that and another one, we have an electron here orbiting the nucleus, another one. So this is the first energy level, this is the second one. For example, we cannot find an energy level just orbiting in this space in here. He said that this is um, not actually possible. This is the second contribution that he made. And this was changed later, as we will know. The third point is that each energy level has a definite amount of energy. So, 
Accordingly, each electron has an amount of energy. So this is the nucleus, and we have an electron here, another one there, third one, fourth, like that. Each electron has a definite amount of energy, and this amount of energy increases as the radius of the energy level increases. And by this I don't mean that the same orbit increases in radius, no, it's, it's something relative. Saying that if this electron here has an amount of energy, it will be smaller than this one, because the radius of... Um, the second energy level is higher than the radius of the first energy level and that's why the energy here is higher than there and so on. The energy of the third energy level is higher than in the second and so on. This is the uh, third contribution. The fourth point is very important actually. Bohr said that the electrons orbit the nucleus in their ground state. Each electron orbits in its own energy level. But when they go to the excited state, they jump from their energy level to a higher one. What does this mean? Simply, if you are standing on the ground, okay, then you get a little bit excited and you jump up in the air like yay, like that. So, you were on the ground. So this is the ground state. You had some kind of potential energy, so you jump up when you are excited. So this potential energy is converted into kinetic energy. So you move from the ground to the excited state. As you are excited. So when you jump up in the air, the kinetic energy will be lost and the gravitational force will pull you down again so that you return to the ground state. The same thing happens in the electron. So, if we have an electron at a certain energy level, like that, So, it gains an amount of energy. When it gains this amount of energy, it gives it the ability, the ability to move or jump to a higher energy level. Then after a period of time, the electron becomes unstable, so it loses this amount of energy And accordingly, it returns back to its ground state. The amount of energy lost and gained in this process is kinda uh, constant, and that's why the electron returns back to the same energy level. For example, if the amount of energy of this electron at the ground state is 50, and it gained an amount of 10. So it moved to a higher energy level. It loses the same amount of energy, which is 10, so it returns back to 50 at its ground state. This amount of energy, gained or lost, is called the um, quantum number. And each energy level has a value of energy which is called the principal quantum number. 
Here is a very important point. How is the energy lost? This uh, quantum, which is gained by the electron, how is this quantum lost? Rutherford said that there are radiations during the orbiting of electrons around the nucleus, and Maxwell said so, but Bohr refused this idea. He didn't actually refute the idea of the presence of radiation, but he refused the idea of the presence of radiation during orbiting around the nucleus. But they, there are actually radiations. When energy is lost from the electrons uh, in their unstable state, they are lost in the form of uh, light radiations with a certain frequency and wavelengths, which corresponds to the energy level in which the electron is found in the unstable state. So, radiations are produced during losing the quantum energy so that the electron can be able to return back to the stable state. This is the force contribution. And finally, uh, Bohr said that the multitude of atoms absorb energy and lose them in the form of atomic spectra and each spectra has its definite frequency and wavelength and this is how he unlocked the uh, atomic structure so this is Bohr's atomic model I hope it was clear so what's the importance of this atomic model and was it sufficient to describe the atomic structure that's what we'll know in the next time and until then I thank you for watching and see you.